Welcome to the Sermon Podcast of Treasure House, a branch of Christ Way Ministries International. We are a family of joyful believers on a mission to change the world with the gospel of Jesus through soul winning and soul building. We believe that these teachings will enrich your soul and strengthen your love for God. Be blessed as you listen. All right, so we're going to be learning on the topic of justice, what the Lord loves to justice, what the Lord loves. Yes. All right. Um, and now we're going to justice. Praise the Lord. Interesting thing is, I think I was on that thought on righteousness. <laughs> oh my God. Praise God. It's going to be a great time. Look how neighbor says it's going to be a great time. Hallelujah. All right. Are you ready? Praise the Lord. I think when we're praying, I received the word. Um, and I think I just shared it. Actually, I immediately, I actually saw someone when I was just trolling here, I just saw someone here, like in front of the fan. <laughs> the person used to be in choir. I guess that was why the whole picture was around that area. So I texted them immediately and I said, person not in the hall, by the way, when I said I saw someone, you know what I mean. So I texted them, can you join live stream? You know, probably God has a word for you today. You know, praise the Lord. And then, you know, the word I got was, um, Yoruba word, interestingly. But the English, let me give you the English. Um, deluge of favorable coincidences. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. Therefore, the Lord waits to be gracious to you, and therefore he exalts himself to show mercy to you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who wait for him. And therefore, the Lord waits that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore he will be exalted. That he may have mercy upon you, for the Lord is a God of judgment. Yeah. Blessed are all they that wait for him. Glory to God. Are we here? Are we here? All right. So let me just give like a background to this or a prelude before I go really into the teaching. Is this. Um, since the beginning of time, all right, people have been experiencing injustice everywhere injustice. You know, we have clear example throughout the scriptures. A good example would be the experiences of the children of Israel in the hands of Pharaoh and the hands of the Egyptians. Do do you understand that? That right there is slavery, right? Oppression. You know, there were times when their punishments were increased. There were times when they would be asked to go and, you know, make... um, um, you know, bricks here yeah, without straws. Do you understand? Like asking someone to go and make 500 um, blocks of um, blocks, all right, without giving them cement or sand or gravel. Just go and figure it out. Do you understand that? So that is oppression, right? That is slavery. That right there is injustice. Do you see that now? So in another term, you can say it is unfair. Together now. So another name for justice is fairness. Just being fair. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's justice and just and being fair. Now, we can see from God's intervention in this story of the Israelites and the Egyptians that God's part in injustice is that it delivers men from unjust men. Is that it delivers the oppressed. That's God's part. So God's part is not that, is not that he puts men in an oppressive state or make men oppressed. And I'm going to explain that. Now, I would have loved that we read through Isaiah chapter 30, you know, from verse 1. I read from verse 1. I, I just read down to get the context. You know, I read after, the verse after the verse 18 as well. And then you would see, I mean, just how the prophet understood it to be at the time, saying, you know, because you know of Israel did this, therefore God now put them under oppression. Maybe that is not the complete picture. And I'm going to explain that. And that's where I want to start from. You notice that when we started this, or when I came on stage, uh, you know, we affirmed the goodness of God, right? We said God is kind. Do you remember that? Remember we said that God is light. And in name is no what? Darkness at all. Everybody say God is light. Can we please celebrate Mommy Lou in the house this evening? <laughs> Good evening, ma'am. Praise the Lord. All right. So, God is light. And in him is no what? Darkness at all. Everybody say God is light. 
Say name is no darkness at all. That book of First John said God is light, and in name is no darkness at all. Now, Hebrews chapter one. Let's do a very quick study on the nature of God. Who is God? What is God's character? God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. God spoke to whom? By whom? One more time. Let's do that again. God spoke to whom? By whom? Now, those, the fathers here, apparently, are the audience of the prophets. Do you understand that? So, who are the prophets here? Isaiah that we just read. Isaiah 30, verse 18. Does that make sense now? So, who are Isaiah's audience? The fathers. Do you get that? Now, next verse. Verse 2. Have in these last days spoken to us by son. So, it seems like there is a sort of change or switch of God's oracle from being the prophet to the son. Does that make sense? Now, let's continue. Whom he hath, next verse, just in verse 2, thank you. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the eons. Now, it says, he has made Jesus the heir of all things. Now, let me explain that. The word heir of all things there means that Jesus is the inheritor. The one who came to full possession of all things spoken by the prophets. So, that was why the Bible says that the law, um, Jesus said, I did not come to eradicate the law. He said, I came to fulfill it. Does that make sense now? So that's why the Bible says, Christ, Romans 4, I believe, said, Christ is the end of the law unto him that believes. So that means the dispensation of the law or dispensation of God speaking to men by prophet ended when Christ came to the sin. Does that make sense? Why did it end when Christ came to the sin? Because Christ is God's son. John 1, 18. No man hath seen God at any time. Is it 18 now? John chapter 1, verse 18. Is it 18 or 21? John 1, 18. It says, no man, yeah, thank you. No man has seen God at any time. Look at that. A question I have is, hmm, so did Moses see God? Question mark. Just leave it there. Just leave it there. The Bible says no man has seen God at any time. You know, the idea we have, or what we've been taught, was that Moses saw the back of the Lord. Hallelujah. But the Bible says that no man had seen God at any time. The only begotten of the Father, sorry, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. Now, let me explain that. That he is in the bosom of the Father. This is what it means. I hope you are learning as quickly as you possibly can, because this is just Ayaba, and it's going to introduce me to our, the direction in which we are going to move tonight. But you have to understand this. Is that okay? So, now look at that. God spoke to the fathers by the prophets. Now, God has made his final bus stop of oracle, of the person to declare, manifest, interpret, translate, communicate him to the world in his son. Meaning that if you want to know God, you go and know who Jesus is. Does that make sense? So, Jesus, to know God, study the syllabus Jesus. No man had seen God at any time. The only begotten son which is in the bosom of the father. That statement, which is in the bosom of the father, represented intimacy. Do you understand that? Meaning, it actually meant I came from the bowels of the father. Meaning, it came from the father. The father is the source. Do you understand that? He said, he had declared him. So, who declared God unto us? The son. Now, go again to Hebrews chapter 1 where we're coming from. Now, go to verse 3. Hebrews 1, 3. Hebrews 1, 3. Who being the brightness of his glory? Who is this who we are? Remember, God who hath in sundry times 
and in diverse manners, spake unto us in time past by the prophet, but hath in these last days spoken to us by whom? His son. Do you remember that? He said, whom he hath appointed, he said, whom he hath appointed the heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Who, the same son, the same son, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Look at that statement. It said Jesus is the express image of God. Meaning, Jesus is the 100% replica of God. Jesus is God walking on the streets of men. Does that make sense? Do you understand that now? So, Jesus is God walking on the streets of men. Are we here? So, to know God, you go to meet Jesus. So, what is God's perspective to this situation? The question we ask is, what did Jesus say when he was saved that same situation? Does that make sense now? You know, a lot of people have an idea of, ah, because I sinned, you know, God has decided to strike me with sickness. Or, you know, maybe, just, maybe God just doesn't want me to be healed of this sickness, you know. But guess what the Bible says? It said, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, right? And he went about doing what? Doing what? Everybody echo it. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. That means as far as Jesus was concerned when he was upon the face of the earth, when any sick person came to him, he didn't say, no discount today, come tomorrow. Mm -mm. Jesus didn't say that. He attended to their situation and got them healed. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, as far as God is concerned, because Jesus is the exact replica of God. So, that means as far as God is concerned, God's will or God's opinion concerning sicknesses is this. All sicknesses that come to God will be healed. Does that make sense? That means God wants you healed. Say, God wants me healed. Does God want you sick? How do we know that? Because a son, when was upon the face of the earth, never refused anybody healing. Do you understand that? In fact, the Bible says, on kiri shorin, he went about doing good. So, the idea of it is this. Jesus was looking for sick people to heal. So, he was on the edge to get men healed. So, Jesus, being the express image of God's character, God's personality, do you see that now? God's person, he exhibited traits that showed us that God is good. So when we see all trances from the prophets, such as for the Lord is good and his message endures forever, Jesus came as a fulfillment of that. Because Jesus went about doing what? Do you understand that now? So Jesus did good. Say again, God is good. How do I know? Because when his son was upon the face of the earth, his son did good. Do you get that? Have I lost you anyone? Good. That means in God's character, in God's character, there is only goodness, not evil or badness, quote unquote. Was there any time Jesus struck anyone with sickness? Answer me, anyone. Was there any time Jesus struck anyone with death? Do you know there was a time Jesus went somewhere and then the people there would not receive him? And the disciples were so upset and so angry. That why would you? Uh, uh, do you let's do what Elijah did to these people. All we need to do is call fire. Call fire down from heaven. Should we, should we call fire down from heaven and consume all of them? What, what wrong with them? And Jesus said, stop it. The Bible said he rebuked them sharply. Sharply. He said, don't say that again. He said, 
you don't know what manner of spirit you are of. Meaning, you don't know the kind of person you are. We don't do that kind of thing here. Do you understand that? So, even though Jesus, at the Garden of Gethsemane, had the ability to call down 12 religious of angels to kill the people that came to arrest him, he withheld that power. So, is the character of God is seen truly in Jesus. That even on the cross, when he was being crucified, he could still see of the same men that crucified them, that Father forgive them, for they know not what they do. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, he had the power to do what they were saying to him, that Savior save thyself. Yet, he said, Father forgive them. He, 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 do you understand me? So, God's character is that he is good. Do you get that? So, there will never be a time because of God's character shown to us in Christ that God will choose to do you evil. You know, there was a man of God that he was ministering healing to some people and then some people were on the line to receive healing, impartation and all that. And then there was a woman that came <laughs> forward and, and, and said, oh, are you sick? She said, yes, yes, I have this particular issue. or I have cancer. I think the woman had cancer or something. And then the pastor was like, oh, um, so what's wrong? Would you like me to pray for you? And the woman said, mm, not really. I think God, you know, just trying to teach me a lesson, you know, this and that. And the pastor said, okay, all right, no problem. Close your eyes and say with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you give me more counsel so that I can teach me more lesson. I'm an obedient child. I want to learn all lessons as much as you can teach me. And the woman said, ah, ah, what, what, what are you doing? I said, I, I thought you wanted to learn lesson now. Do you understand? Like, you are an obedient child. So it's to show that God's character is not to oppress a man or to inflict them with evil. God's nature is that he meets oppressed men and save them out of oppression. That was exactly what he came to do. It is his nature revealed in salvation. That he saw us in our utter helplessness. And he came by sovereignty to help us out. We could not have saved ourselves. Do you understand that? So we're under the oppression of the enemy. He came and helped us out. Do you get that now? Now, that's what you call justice. Praise the Lord. Now, there is a difference between, everybody don't be distracted, look at me. There is a difference between justice and justification. Praise the Lord. Everybody look at me, look at me, look at me. Say with me, there is a difference between justice and justification. On one time, look at your neighbor, say, do you know that there's a difference? Between justice and justification. Now, there's no, let me confuse you a bit. There's no difference between just and being righteous. However, there's difference between justice and justification. Justification means that all charges laid on you, are, you've been discharged and acquitted of all charges. Meaning you went to the court of law and you were accused of um, third degree murder or manslaughter and then you add um, an advocate or a lawyer a barrister like Sister Tulu and Amen who came and then you know litigated was in a court of law argued for you and then you were discharged and acquitted of all charges against you that is justification however justice means that now, justification, quote and unquote, is on the end of the receiver, while justice is on the end of the giver. Let me explain this. Remember the court of law analogy I just gave. So, from the perspective of the judge, he is giving justice to that case. Do you get that? In the sense that there's someone who did bad, someone who did good. Which one is the right um, punishment or acquittal to give in that situation? 
So that right there, making that right decision of making the choice between what is right and what is wrong or standing by doing what is right in that situation from the end of the judge, that's justice. Do you get that? But justification is, in, is something that you receive from that judge. So that act of justice done in your favor is justification. Do you get it now? Does everybody get it? Now, justice means that now in Christ, it means that like pastor we always say, we have to move levels. We have to change levels. <laughs> All right? That in Christ, right in that justification is a seed. Say with me, in justification is a seed. Look at your neighbor. Say, do you know that in justification is a seed? Now that you've been justified by faith, now that you've been justified by faith, you now have a seed within you whereby you can carry out justice every day of your life. It's like how we say that because you are the tree of righteousness, you can bring forth the fruits of righteousness. Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah chapter 61. He said that, you know, the planting of the Lord the trees of righteousness. And then you see in Philippians 1 verse 11, he said, bring, you know, uh, bringing forth fruits of righteousness with, uh, which are by Jesus Christ. So the idea of it is this. When you got saved or you received justification, you receive the supernatural ability to do what is right. You receive the nature of God in salvation. You receive the spirit of God in salvation. So, God's act of justice towards you plants a seed of your justice towards others such that your life is now colored by that singular act of justice done towards you by God such that that is how you see life and everyone else around you. Let me give you a good example. Are we here? Good. You jilted Christ. You cheated God. You caught, you caused, you caused hurt to God. You know, we had a lot of people who um, were atheists before they got saved. Do you understand that? Or let's say a lot of people who were sex workers before they got saved. Or a lot of people who were into fraud, hallelujah, before they got saved. Now, they receive God's immense love in salvation. By receiving that, out of the blues, they realize that having soaked themselves in that love of God in salvation, receiving the gospel, believing it, this, is, this thing is too big, it's too good to be true. It is too good, yes, it is true. Do you see that? Believing the gospel, it does something to their heart. Such that when they see other people doing fraud or sex work, there's a different perspective they ask towards those people now. Such that your life also can turn around. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, Who created that chain of effect? Christ. He extended the first hand of love. You received the love... And that love did something in you such that you find it a passion of justice to make good on God's word in the life of others. So that you cannot but see others from the same lens of the new man that Christ has made you. Do you get what I'm saying? How many of you know Pastor Tony Rappo? How many of us know Pastor Tony Rappu? Yeah. All right. Just a few of us. Wow. Really? <laughs> Everybody should know Pastor Tony Rappu. Pastor Rappu is a um, heavy way too. All right. You know, you see, I mean, that may not be my own approach. 
but he's getting results, massive results. This man, we go to pick people, Apostle Tony Rappo, we go to pick people from, let's say, Bariga, Oshudi, Egbeda, Ikorodu, places where, you know, places like Ojaja, in fact, places where it is normal there that if you grew up, sorry, I'm sorry, throwing shades at you. Places where, you know, you grow up in the midst of people who smoke stuff as breakfast. Do you understand? Their lunch is incomplete without one puff or two. And then at night, they take dinner, you know, accompanied with jeans and spirits drinks. Glory to God. Not only spirits, but other spirits. <laughs> All right? But I'm just saying that that is the kind of life they live and the environment they grew up in. This man will go to pick people from that place and turn them, all right, via rehabilitation, teaching of God's word, you know, meeting with them, mentoring them. Their lives will be completely changed such that you will not be able to recognize them in the next seven months. In the next 13 months, they are completely changed people. These people will go on to become pastors. That's wild. Someone who was already, you know, having some psychotic effects to the intensity of what they've done to themselves. They will get rehabilitated and become people who can employ labor. Become folks who can make pastors out of others. You know that is wild, right? But you know, that is the kind of thing that the love of God does in a man who has accepted God's love and who had that kind of past. Such a man, are you listening? Such a man, because that man received deliverance from oppression, such a man will receive, by God's love, receive passion to deliver others from oppression. So it's a ripple effect and that is where justice comes in. Are you following? So I'm trying to show you that the first just person was God. He started that old domino effect. You know domino, right? You know, have you watched those kind of TikTok videos or Instagram real videos where they will stack many things together and when you push the first one, another one does, yeah. God started that domino effect. And that's exactly what we do in evangelism. Who guess what I'm saying? The Yorubas will say, even though it's not in the, Yoruba, it's not in the Bible, but it is correct. Have you heard that before? It is true. Praise the Lord. It's like other phrases are not exactly in the Bible, but are true. Like, I do have your part, Christian. If you like, don't pray. Well, I'm with your part, your direction for life. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed this evening? So, so have I been able to show you that God's own part in oppression is that he saves the oppressed? Have I been able to show you that? Hey, have I been able to show you that? Please, I need your feedback. Are you here? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Are we here with me? Have I been able to show you that God's part in oppression is that he's on the edge to save the oppressed, to deliver the oppressed. Have I been able to show you that? Have I been able to also show you that by receiving the love of God in his deliverance of you, the oppressed, from the hands of the enemy, you now also have in you a by nature passion to also deliver other oppressed from the hands of the enemy. Do you see that now? So that's what God does in you. Like a man of God, we say, salvation is not just a message to be enjoyed. It's an example to emulate. It is the life that we live. Praise God. It's like why we forgive others. We don't forgive others so that God will forgive us. We forgive because God in Christ forgave us. Pastor Mama taught this many years ago. She said, we don't forgive so that we forgive because. Look at your neighbor. Say, we don't forgive so that. Say, we forgive because. 
Say we don't forgive so that God will forgive us. Say we forgive because God has forgiven us in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, examples of how men who have received God's love and God's justice demonstrated justice to other men. Act chapter 6 is a very good example where we have women, widows, alienists who were complaining of being misaligned and discriminated against. Do you see that? In the distribu- distribution of the food, of food. Praise God. I mean, Acts chapter 6, so hallelujah. Media, amen. amen. All right. So, discrimination. All right. You know, in our manual, we have people, you know, people who had to go to racial injustice. Do you understand that? Discrimination of different kind. <laughs> you know, Paul himself was discriminated against. Until someone tipped them that, do you know that this is a Roman citizen? And they said, bro, I bear no vex. Uh, because they know that. You don't do those kind of things to Roman citizens. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, so some people were murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration, meaning daily serving of the food. Next verse. Then the twelve, the apostles, called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, it is not reason, meaning it doesn't make sense that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Verse 3. Wherefore, brethren, look here among you, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we, are, we may appoint over this business. Praise the Lord. Are you listening now? Now, next verse. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer to the ministry of the word. Verse 5. And the same place, the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip and Prochorus, and Nicanor and Parmenas, and Timon, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. Now, they heard there was discrimination. What was the church's response? Solving that issue. Do you get what I'm saying? Are we here? If you are here, say I'm blessed. blessed. All right, good. There was discrimination in the church. What was the church's response? Fixing it. Do you understand that? Choosing men that can serve as panacea to that challenge. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So, when it comes to justice, not only in the church of God, but also in the community, in society, the church has a role to play. However, don't mistake this as a church primary role. Do you understand that? You know, a lot of people, especially Twitter, Twitter fighters, hey, they'll begin to, you know, drag churches and general overseers because they not took their amounts in social, you know, societal issues. And I'll be like, are you okay? Do you understand? Does Baba Debo Erisemu fella draw to you in your eyes? Do you get what I'm saying? Like, there are some persons who can do that. It is not, it's famous and popular, yes. Is the, uh, the adage of millions of people, right? But does that mean that was what God called him to do? No. Do you understand what I'm saying? When God was writing his job description, he did not include that. So if he chose not to do that, none of your business, sir. Do you get what I'm saying? Hmm? None of your business. Does that now mean <laughs> that the church should not be active participants in justice reforms in the society? No. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. You have no idea. For example, our daddy Jew in Christ or our pioneer daddy Jew. You have no idea. You know, some people just say weird things about you. Just have like, okay, maybe you should go and sit down. <laughs> if you go and sit down, you have no idea how many people's school fees he has paid, how many people's hospital bills he has. Do you understand? Like, you can't begin to imagine you can't. Talk, talk of this same man of God. Like, apart from the fact that, look at his age, look at your age. Why, what's wrong with you? 
Because you have access to type on the internet and you can, your, your post has the potential to go viral. You think I can just say anything to any man of God? Haven't you heard of Aaron and Miriam? Dot, dot, dot. Amen. You don't just open your mouth bah, to see anything. And I think that's instructive to some of us here. Praise the Lord. You don't just type anything on your status. This person, girl, she did not know that. Well, go and buy cold pure water and drink it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ah, ah. Do you know? Hmm. I was watching Dove's television one day and I was seeing 13 billion naira as CSR initiative that redeemed Christian Church of God has spent in 12 months alone, in 2023 alone. Have you paid my school fees? Do you understand? What have you done? Because they don't shout about it doesn't mean... Ah. Praise God. Are we here? Again, the church's response is not apathy. Do you understand that? However, it is not the church's major responsibility. So, we, you don't expect us to be at the forefront of that. We will support you know, corporate social responsibility because Christ taught us that we should love our neighbors as ourselves, not just other, you know, religious tolerance is part of this thing we are talking about. You should be able to live with a Muslim peacefully, get them saved, of course, preach the gospel to them, but not in such a way that you want to hold VG in your house and you are praying on top of your voice and disturbing them when they are sleeping. No, that's injustice. You didn't learn that from Christ. One of the reasons why Christ went away to other places to pray is because he respected people's privacy. Have you thought about that? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Can't you emulate Christ? You, so you have not so learned Christ, literally. Do you understand what I'm saying? So God gave you a clear example of justice. Emulate it. The Bible says, and be ye imitators of God. Praise God. Amen? So, being a just person means being a righteous person. And it means that, hmm, I was going to give an analogy, but I think I'll just leave it for now. Praise the Lord. Have you been blessed today, though? I have just limited time. Wow. <laughs> All right. Glory to God. Hope you have, hope you have learned 13 or 2. Praise God. Say with me, in Christ, I have seen justice in that he delivered me from the oppression of the enemy. Say, I will commit my life toward delivering other men from oppression in the hands of the enemy. Full stop. See, that's the summary of what the job Christ gave for us now, the deliverance could be spiritual, could be physical, could be in any form. Amen? For example, the deliverance doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, praying in tongues for someone. It could be just encouraging them. Word of exhortation. I know that's prophecy. Edification, exhortation, comfort. Are you following what I'm saying? That way, you have, with God's power, given someone therapy. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed tonight? All right, so I'm just going to ask one question. Let's go to our discussion quickly. We have just a few minutes. Um, hallelujah. All right, question one. You know, I'll just ask question three. Praise God. How can God establish, or let me ask you this way. How did God establish justice through forgiveness of sins? Praise the Lord. Um, anyone who wants to take that on? How can God establish justice through forgiveness of sins? Praise God. I feel like calling your husband. I don't know why. Praise, I should call him. I should call him. <laughs> yes, sir. Can we please pass him the mic? Can we celebrate him this evening, everybody? Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So how did God, 
Well, how can God um, establish justice through forgiveness of sins? Amen. Praise God. Um, Praise our living Jesus. How can God, please can you come again? Establish question? justice. Or let me ask you this way. How did God establish justice through forgiveness of sins? Um, praise God once again. Hallelujah. I think uh, the Bible is complete. Mm-hmm. And as you have taught us, it is very necessary, like you have said, that's not because. Mm-hmm. Nabi, if I don't know. Not so that. Not so that. But because. But because yeah. God. God yeah. has had the spirit of in which whereby mm-hmm. people say, oh, I want to do this for peace to reign. Mm-hmm. But uh, based on the standard of the Bible, mm-hmm. we must come to that understanding that working with God requires, there are some certain things in us that we must drop, that must not go with us in, in this Christian journey. Okay. And there are some we must speak up. So God has set himself as a standard for yeah. us yeah. in Christian life. Yeah. Can we please celebrate him? So God set himself as a standard for the Christian life. I think that just summarizes it. Praise the Lord. Such that we have a prototype in God. Praise the Lord. That we keep looking at every day. And keep getting better every day. Because we see an example to emulate in him. Look at your neighbor. Say this. Be ye imitators of God. I said look at your neighbor. Like pastor will say tap your neighbor. Tap your neighbor. Say be ye imitators of God. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed tonight? I just want us to stand up and just pray a simple prayer and I leave this place. That Father, in the name of Jesus, every day I commit myself towards emulating the standard you've set in Christ. In forgiving others, in standing in God for people in injustice. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I will not like the good Samaritan. I will stay and wait and tend to people's hurt and pain. That I will not look over I will be a good Christian. I will be kind, just as you are kind. I will be good, just as you are good. I will be fair, just as you are fair. That in the name of Jesus, the love that I shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Spirit of promise, that this same love finds expression every day, every time, through justice and righteousness. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I will not look over people's pain. Say that. I will not look over people's pain. I would actually take a step back. I will pray for people and intercede for them. You know, that's justice, right? I will speak to people and help them get better. That I will not give up on anyone. Say, I will not give up on anyone. I will not give up on anyone. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Say with me, I believe that Christ has set an example for me as a just man. Say, therefore, I live as a just man. I am an imitator of God in the name of Jesus. Can you celebrate God? We trust you had a good time with God's word. To enjoy more of this, follow us on our Twitter and Instagram and use art underscore Treasure Church and on YouTube at Treasure House Christ Church. God bless you.